I understand Ruth asked Dinky earlier whether or not I still remember. And I said, how can I forget one of my, my bosses at uh, PBSP, which was my first job. So I guess some of you knew we were together there. Um, some of you, I think, will know that we're not of the same generation, but we're... Uh, <laughs> But I'm sure there is one story that I want to share. And when I was first told that there was an invitation to join you at this gathering, I said, it would be a nice occasion to see Ruth again, uh, renew our friendship. It's my mother that she has uh, been working with ever since I left uh, PBSP. And, some, and, uh, and it's been quite a while since I last saw her. I was computing earlier. Um, the time that I met her is definitely longer than your anniversary tonight. Anyway, I'm sure she doesn't remember this, but um, can I just take you back to those years? 1983, my father was assassinated. I thought my main function then was really, I'd like to say justice or to get justice. I knew we wanted to help finish the work that my dad had not finished. I knew we wanted to get democracy back, but I really had serious doubts as to whether or not the peaceful mode of regaining our democracy really still had the chance. Those of you of uh, my generation, a little bit older, will remember that Davao was already turning into the urban laboratory for the Communist Party of the Philippines. Some of you will remember the groups called Light the Fire and the April 6 uh, movement, which were not traditional leftist organizations, but actually were people by some who had even gone to the most um, establishment of schools like Harvard, who also said there, is, there seems to be no room and no hope for attaining a peaceful transition back to democracy. So it was in this context that my mother said that, you know, in, to a certain degree, or to a large sense, what she wanted was for us to get back to some semblance of a normal life. I, as the only son, I think you will understand, was at this point in time perhaps committed to the Older Testament in the Bible rather than the Newer Testament. I really felt that um, my dad's attempt at trying to, trying to reach um, a reasonable dialogue with the dictatorship was, how shall we say, was welcomed by you know, the treachery that befell him at the, at the airport. Anyway, the, the story that I want to say, just to make this dialogue not that, that, that heavy, is that one day I found myself talking to Ruth, and um, I was a young man then, and I was uh, seriously attracted by, by this young lady. And I asked her, and when I did find out that uh, she and her husband were both student activists, I asked her, uh, we're in the struggle, is it, would it be fair uh, to get a party not directly involved in the struggle that we are in to join us, well, well, to have a relationship with this person, given the fact that I really believe that, you know, um, the dictatorship would probably end in the same way that dictatorships have ended elsewhere, no? which is through a bloody revolution. Would it, you know, I guess in, in Tagalog it says it's a lot better. May binati ka, madadamay mo pa dito, obligasyon mo ba na wag na siya idamay? So I asked her opinion, and then she said, on the one hand, finding that right partner really does mellow you down. But on the other hand, you do get derive strength, you do derive um, inspiration, you are able to accomplish that which you need to do with that significant other beside you. Okay? And I really took that to heart. And I did embark on that relationship. And of course, I want to state for the record that I don't blame Ruth for the fact that I'm still a bachelor at this time. <laughs> she, had, she had nothing to do with that. No? I had a cousin actually that I asked the same question to. Then the way he said it was, problems come to us without any control nor inputs nor desire from us. If, on the other hand, we do get chance at, you know, chances to be happy and we force ourselves not to be happy, then there must be something wrong with an attitude like that. Okay. So I'd like to think that I have in Ruth a kindred spirit. And I really felt compelled to come tonight in the sense that I met her through PBSP, which is a social development foundation. There is a point, and also I'd like to say the same for Dinky Sulman. No? Dinky, when I was talking to her and, and Ruth to a certain degree, you know, they, they, are, they embody the same traits of people. You know, you know when, you, when you work, you know, I really admire you and your department. You're a department that has to confront problems you know, on a daily basis, 24-7. All other departments can have a, a problem today, can be 
uh, extolling a success the following day, or can even have it a, a problem in the morning and a solution in the afternoon. However, in your chosen advocacy, it, is an, it seems at times to be a never-ending quest. How do you actually sustain yourself to keeping up with um, the same drive, the same energy? And of course, you know, uh, we were together, Ruth and I, were together in PBSP in 1984, which is 32 years already, and she's still at it, and perhaps in an even bigger sphere. And you now to people like, well, to all of you, but I'd really like to say thank you to Ruth, thank you to Dinky. They are a very important, they, they serve as a very important catalyst for the things that we really are trying to do. You know, earlier, Mr. Bertram Lim said that um, I have interest in the poor. You know, the way I'd phrase it is, I don't, I don't really believe in trying to create divisions. No? Some are rich, some are poor, some are successful, some are failures. Um, when we say rights for the women, I say, shouldn't the rights be, uh, shouldn't the rights be enjoyed by everybody all the time? So, what I'd like to say is, and the way we phrase it is, we always say, walang may iwan. What does that basically mean? Yeah. You know, anybody who's left behind you know, becomes a problem not just for themselves but for everybody else. In the same token, the only real solution is one that is all-encompassing and all-inclusive. You know. If we leave somebody behind, we all get dragged down. We bring somebody up, we all get lifted up. And I'm, I, I'll be preaching to the choir if I continue with this message. So let me go to the specific messages that I'd like to share with you tonight. No. You know, again, talking about truth, it is people like her and my father, you know, people who have done everything in their power to alleviate the suffering of others to whom we owe our thanks. This is the part that Buchabad always breaks out in a smile because I'm about to quote the Bible. No. They prove that as Luke 137 says, with God, nothing will be impossible. Injustice can be vindicated, oppressive regimes ended. Communities transformed, you know, their work, both of them and so many of us, their work has helped us to realize a society in which being our brother's keeper no longer has to be fraught with danger. A society in which love for our fellow men can be freely expressed through public service and civic work alike. It goes without saying that I'm very happy to see that all of your work has continued through the Center for Community Transformation. I would like to thank i sorry, I would like to think that Ruth will always associate herself with like-minded people. And I believe that your 10,000 strong force of community volunteers and leaders built over 25 years is proof positive of how much can be accomplished when we make the greatest commandment our life's mission. When in being our brother's keepers, we do, we do choose to act by paying it forward. A single year in the quarter century you have, sing, you have been active, sorry, singularly in the quarter century that you have been active has given us an adequate picture of your efforts. In 2015 alone, we saw you helping communities in disaster struck areas by providing housing assistance to 294 families, loans to both, boat loans rather, to 840 fisher folk, livelihood assistance to 2,637 families. In that same year, 48,096 men and women were covered by your savings and credit association. While, <laughs> while 23 centers began operations to serve the various needs of communities. At this point, can I just digress a little and say, when I, I am also on the campaign trail these days, and when we do say, what does the Angmatwid mean for your respective provinces? One of the challenges is trying to you know, rekindle the memory of everybody of the transformation that has been wrought in their society, which basically means giving out a list of what improvements you know, have happened, whether it's the number of schools, the number of uh, the beneficiaries for Pantawid Pamilya, the membership in PhilHealth, the infrastructure, and so on. Just describing it as already a lengthy process. Actually detailing all of the projects becomes the difficulty. I had, I think this last week I had a seven-page speech and about five pages were devoted to just listing what has been accomplished. So when I tend to go through fast about these numbers, I realize you know, all of the achievements that we have just mentioned did not happen overnight and are the result of so much commitment. Now, I do not mean to belittle the efforts of everybody here. I really want to say that you have done 
so much. And again, perhaps we in government are obligated to do so. You obviously are just obligated by your sense of volunteerism and community and of being of service to God. And for that, again, I offer you my most sincerest thanks. Of course, I'm well aware that the impact I've had on Philippine society goes far beyond these mere figures. There are the fathers and mothers you empower through microfinance to operate their own small businesses and provide for their families' needs. The communities to whom you give free education and health services, the families whose spiritual lives you have strengthened through your ministry. In reaching out to our brethren in the margins or on the margins, you yourselves have become pathways to the Lord. You have helped them to renew their faith in others and in Him and in themselves. We remember Matthew 25 to 35. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. For what is faith, after all, but a promise that we will never be forsaken. If during the martial law regime, Ruth and others like her found it difficult to do their work and uplift communities, today I tell you that government stands by you. We will empower you, we will work with you, and we have been empowering and working with you. Indeed, by forging stronger partnerships, we can merge our skills and capacities, capacities for the benefit of our countrymen. For example, the conditional cash transfer program. You will note that I'm avoiding CCT because people might get confused as to which CCT we're referring to. So the conditional cash transfer program, our flagship anti-poverty program, should be familiar not only because of the same acronym, but rather because you have also contributed to its success. Under our, under our conditional cash transfer program, household beneficiaries that receive cash and assistance in exchange for fulfilling the conditions of sending their children to school and ensuring they receive the necessary vaccinations and attending medical checkups. In 2013, you, um, <laughs> your CCT partnered with the DSWD to implement the Program for the Livelihood and Transformation Project, giving participants access to credit, savings, and micro-insurance for SMSME development. Apart from that, as an extension of your own project, you have also partnered with a TESDA accredited institute to provide training in carpentry, plumbing, masonry, and electrical installation and maintenance. All of these fields, by the way, I am told, are so full of vacancies that a lot of our very well-established construction companies have urgent hiring needs for the categories we just mentioned. I believe that Pro-LIT is only a three-year program which means that it is slated to end this year. We hope that I will not be putting too much pressure on you when I say that a worthy way of celebrating your 25th anniversary would be to extend this partnership and reach even more beneficiaries. Should, need, should you need further convincing, which I highly, I, I highly doubt, let me relate to you an especially significant achievement. Preliminary findings from an assessment of households conducted by the DSWD show that more than 1.5 million households, or around 7.7 .7 million Filipinos, have already breached or have been lifted above the poverty line, thanks to the Conditional Cash Transfer Program. <laughs> Obviously, with help, or with the help of organizations like yourselves, we can continue this trend. In fact, perhaps I should also ask for your assistance when we embark on the next phase of this. We have, of course, the program for those at the bottom, the bottom quintile of our population. The question is, what happens to those that have just breached uh, the poverty threshold, the category that is now called the near poor? Near poor is, the, is defined as households that with just one calamity striking or one disease taking hold of them, they are reverted back to living below the poverty line. So the next programs are how to push them away further and further away from the poverty line. So programs that will address the needs of the near poor are the next on the agenda. And again, at this point in time, may I solicit your support for that forthcoming program. After examining, again, your track record, I was extremely pleased to see that you did not limit your work only to your namesake in government. Another example, I'm told that the DSWD has accredited, or another, another project I'm told that DSWD um, has done with you has been to accredit your boarding schools in, this is the part that I had to ask, is it Puy 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 Puy? Puy, Puy. <laughs> when I was reading it, I wonder, 
if I'm pronouncing it right, or somebody <laughs> miswrote this, Puy Puy and Magdalena y Laguna, which serve as homes to street children while their parents transition away from life on the streets and get back on their own two feet through livelihood opportunities provided by our Kaibigan ministry. We could go on and on, but a lengthy speech, and I think I'm times five already from that of our, as of Bertram Lim, <laughs> but a lengthy speech is neither the point of our gathering nor the reason I'm here to do tonight. I'm here simply because I want to thank you for the work that you have done and continue to do. I join you because I want to celebrate 25 years of the meaningful transformation you have wrought in so many Filipino communities. In the moments when the burden of my office weighs heavily on me, it is being and praying with people like you that refresh me and renew my strength and hope. I always promise to leave the Philippines in a far better state than the one in which I found it. And I believe that I will do that. I will do just that when I step down in 91 days. Yet no matter how great our successes these past few years, I can still admit to a little bit of worry that those who want to return us to the old and corrupt systems will succeed. That worry somehow is dissipated. Each time I stand in front of audiences like this, each time I travel around the country and meet Filipinos who have seen and who have contributed to the positive change in sweeping the nation, there is relief in the knowledge that you stand with us in the agenda for continuity, that like us, you are not willing to let your hard work, work that has redounded to the betterment of so many of our countrymen's lives go to waste. You and all other Filipinos doing their part to build our nation every day are proof positive that no matter what happens next month or in the years afterwards, there will be always men and women who choose to tread the straight path, fight the good fight, and work for the benefit of all Filipinos. And if I may end in this manner, there was a, a woman that um, we came across, a beneficiary of the R4 Peace Program in Pampanga. She narrated her life story in, in a few paragraphs no, during one of our rallies there. She said, that she is the mother of seven children. Her husband had abandoned her. She was, um, she had, the way she phrased it in Tagalog was, the livelihood was nagtitin na tindaho. What does that actually mean? Sometimes she does sell something, a lot of times perhaps, no, there is, no, she is not able to sell. In, bottom line, there was no fixed income for her, no way actually to help raise her seven children. And so she says, she credits uh, the, the Four Peace Program as having helped her in getting three of her children educated past the high school level who are now all gainfully employed and are permanent employees. When I go around these days, I think her story encapsulates that you know, which, that which we are trying to do, why we, we say there has to be continuity. I ask the crowds that I am I'm fortunate to talk to, I ask them, if this woman was here present, she tells us, you have helped us, you have helped me raise my three children to the point that they are now productive citizens. I still have four. You have helped me without unduly burdening anyone. You know? The taxes that you have paid have funded government's efforts towards helping me. I have utilized this opportunity to get a better life for all of us. I still have four children that I left. You can continue to help again and again without actually having to unduly burden anyone. Just do what has to be done. She might ask all of us if she were before us. I am at this stage where you know, light is really shining upon us. We ask, will you continue to shine that light on us or will you leave us here after we had hoped that finally we could have a better life? I'm sure the people in this room and your other colleagues you know, will definitely say, yes, we will not leave you we will continue assisting you until such point that you are ready to take hold of your entire future. Again, my thanks for 25 years of service. Hopefully, you will go not just from the strength of the path, but rather more and more successes down the line. Thank you. Good evening.